because I think we are a good, consistent communicating type company, we don't have a lot of build up to things. So we've, we've got a culture where people understand. And I, I tell people all the time, like, do not, I, I want your hand raised early and often when things are starting to go sideways or you anticipate that they might. I don't want a hero. I don't want somebody who wants to solve the whole problem first and then come back and tell me that it almost was a big problem, but it wasn't because they figured it out. Because more times than not, you will struggle on your own to solve that problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we will have a much bigger problem to solve that as a group, we could have gotten that. And so because I think we have wired that in our culture, um, people aren't afraid to say, I'm falling behind schedule. The, this didn't go the way I thought. That's going to cost more money than I thought. Rather than trying to solve that on your own, I'd like to know it four weeks earlier and try to solve it with you. And so I think we ultimately that happens through experience, right? So eventually you're either going to be on one of our smaller teams, you're going to be in a conversation with me or with, with somebody, you're going to see that happen. And that's the only way that ultimately you get comfortable doing it yourself is at some point you got to be in one. You got to, you got to experience it from the other side. You've got to see a peer or a colleague of yours go through that and, and feel comfortable saying, Hey, I'm going to roll this up the flagpole. And we're going to talk. About this. Oh, I can't believe we're going to talk about that. That's, that's bad news. They're going to be real upset. Well, you know, so I, it's, a, it's, it's one of those things that the culture has to make it go. It's, it mm -hmm. can't be a process thing. You can process orient a whole bunch of stuff and we do, but that one you can't, it just, people have to get comfortable there. And so we have a leadership team that's built on, I know our people and I know our culture. And so a, I can communicate it to, to candidates, I think pretty well, but I think I also have a pretty good read uh, in spending enough time with people that I, I can pick up on those subjective things that you've, you've got to kind of figure out if they are a cultural fit. And then we just take an insanely transparent approach in the recruiting and interview process. And so we're very direct with people. We tell them exactly what it's like. We tell them that working in companies like this isn't a fit for everybody and, and what our style is. And, you know, working in startups and early stage companies, like if you're the type of individual that likes a, you know, like it's a very predictable routine and you like to know what's coming at you and you like to know exactly, you know, what the end of the day is going to look like when you start the beginning of the day, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not a good fit for a company like this. And so we challenge people. We really challenge them to like understand it. And I, we have had, it's been great because we've had people who come back to us after they'll interview and they'll say, after all that, like, I'm going to remove myself. I don't think I'm a good fit for that. Uh, and that's a win for me, from my perspective, because that means that we got to that point before we mutually made a decision that we would potentially all regret. And because of that, we have incredibly low turnover um, because I think we work really hard to make sure that when you walk in the doors on your first day, like there are, that's my goal, that you leave the end of your first day and there's no moment that you're driving away saying, wow, I wish I knew that before I started, right? Because then we're, we, we really are going to struggle to have some success there. So it's unbelievably valuable. I mean, I, I still, have, I feel like on almost a weekly basis, like something wraps back around It's it, whether it's me or somebody else in my company will say like, I can't believe that this came back around and that's, and, and you know, it's a, it, it's kind of a cultural approach that we have as a company, like, you know, comes with again, that cultural respect. Like we don't, you know, we don't burn any bridges. We don't get angry if like something, you know, just like the timing might be wrong now to, to be a customer or a partner. And we've certainly had times where that's happened. And two years later, we re-engage in some way. And I think the way you handle things and handle yourself and how you communicate, um, you know, dictates those things. And especially in my market, it's a small industry in the gray. It's big, but it's small. Uh, and everybody kind of knows everybody. And word gets around pretty quickly on like, who you are. Hey, it's a good group to work with. And, and, you know, part of how we've been able to build so many partnerships and relationships in the industry, I, you know, maybe it's by giving it a split, maybe it's 60% because of our technology, but the other 40% is because of the people. I really believe yeah. that, right? I mean, we've had that share with us over and over again. Like, Hey, we want to work with good people. We want to, you know, we like the way you guys focus on trying to get this right in baseball and softball. We, you know, we just, you know, I know this person and they think really highly of this person on your team, you know, I'm going through this with a major league team right now. And it's like, yeah, guy popped up. He's like, I didn't realize that. Like I've got like two degrees of separation, like five different people in your company, you know, and <laughs> those things matter, you know? So, um, so I, I think it's, it's hugely important, um, you know, maintaining your network, kind of maintaining who you are and what people think about you in that world. Um, it's, it's pretty critical.